Hey everybody, it's the Epic Flight Academy. I'm Mike Thompson and our topic today is weight and balance. Now, when we start getting into this, please be sure to use Epic's online course and look at those references. Secondly, these videos just parallel that content. And then finally, and thirdly, and just as important, review all of this one-on-one -on -one with your flight instructor. So in addition to the references that you see in the online course, I want you to refer to your pilot information manual. Now, what chapter in the PIM or POH is weight and balance? Hmm. If you said chapter six, you're correct. <clears throat> now, in addition to other sources for weight and balance terminology, you will find some weight and balance terminology in the PIM chapter one. So in your pilot information manual, uh, in addition to the other resources, we're looking at chapters six and chapter one. So let's start with some of these common terms. First of all, center of gravity itself. Center of gravity is an imaginary point where the aircraft is balanced. Now, my flight instructor once told me to imagine taking this center of gravity shape. Do you see the circle with the, it's cut into four quadrants, two of them are blacked out. We take that center of gravity symbol and imagine that we had a string tied to it and my aircraft was balancing on the end of that string. Now it's important to remember if you're visualizing this string that center of gravity balance is fore and aft certainly but it is also side to side and it's also vertically up and down. That point where all three of these axes balance is the center of gravity. The second term we want to be sure to understand is CG range. Now on any airplane there is a certain range within which the center of gravity must be. Otherwise, if I have my imaginary string to this airplane, if I'm outside of that range, it's not going to hang straight. It's not going to balance. That's CG range. We'll see that CG range in the PIM chapter 6. The next term I want you to be familiar with is the datum. That's D-A-T-U-M, datum, or often called a reference datum. It's called a reference datum because that is the reference from which we measure horizontally distances to get for our weight and balance calculations. Now, in our online course, you're going to see this little graphic. This graphic comes to us right from the PHAC, that's the Pilot Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge, and you can see what they're depicting here is the datum and a CG range. This CG range will have a forward and an aft limit. Uh, the next term we want to understand is called station. Station means the position or station of something on board my aircraft, like for example, the pilot seat, passenger seats, fuel tanks, etc. Now those stations are measurable distance from the datum. Okay, the next term that we want to talk about is called arm. Now, it's not literally your arm, but the arm is the distance from the datum. So the distance from the datum to the station is the arm. That arm is typically measured in inches. 
If I was to take a tape measure, here's my imaginary tape measure, and measure in inches literally from the aircraft's uh, datum to the station, that number of inches would be the arm. At the station, some particular object, whatever it might be, maybe it's me sitting in the pilot seat, or it's you sitting in the pilot seat, or it's fuel in the tank, or baggage in the baggage hold, whatever, that item is going to have some weight. Now, after Memorial Day, my weight might go up a little bit. Whatever that weight is, we have to measure it. So now I know the station, the weight at the station, and the arm. That brings us to your next term, which is very important, and it's called the moment. Now, I want you to remember right away, we're not talking about a moment in time. We're talking about a moment in physics, which means a rotational or torquing force. So the moment is the product of the weight at the station times the arm in inches. If I multiply those together, I get a number, and that number is the moment. And the moment is the physical rotational or torquing force. All right, let's go on to our next graphic. In the online course, you're going to see this graphic. Now, this graphic shows a triangle as a balance point, and it shows an arm to these blue boxes. These blue boxes are at a station and have a particular weight, and they balance at a certain point. That balance point is called the center of gravity. Remember we looked at the symbol earlier? Our circle cut into four quadrants, two of them are blacked out. That is the CG point. Notice in our diagram it shows the datum and the CG at the same point. Now that's not necessarily the case in your aircraft. If we go back to this diagram from the P-Hack, this is the side view or profile view of a general aviation airplane like a Cessna 182 or a 172, and you see the datum, and you see the CG range. Somewhere within that range will be the center of gravity, and that CG is not necessarily the datum that you see in this graphic from our online course. Let's go on to our next term. The next term we want to understand for weight and balance is unusable fuel. Well, guess what? That's exactly what it says it is. Fuel that is unusable. Now, it's interesting to understand why is that fuel unusable? To understand that, I want you to take a look at this simple schematic of your fuel system. And here we see a gravity-fed high-wing fuel system, very similar to the one that you have in your 172. Depicted here is the left tank, the right tank, and they're flowing down to the fuel selector. What I want you to be sure to notice is where is that fuel being picked up from the tank. Now, unlike a lot of fuel tanks, or maybe the fuel tank in a truck or an automobile, those fuel pickups are at the bottom of the fuel tank. Notice in your diagram here, these fuel pickups are not coming off the bottom, but from the side. Why is that the case? In aviation, it is just an extra precaution to help prevent any dirt or grime, grit, sand, anything that could possibly be in our tank or in our fuel system to prevent it from clogging up that little sock filter. And you can see the little sock filter here. So the sock filter and the sideways pickup 
both help prevent clogging that fuel flow. Now, put it all together. Well, if we're picking it up from the side of the tank, now can you see at the very bottom of this tank is going to be some fuel that cannot be picked up and that fuel is unusable and that unusable fuel must be accounted for in our weight and balance calculations. Fuel load is our next term and fuel load is defined as only the usable fuel. Our next term is the useful load. The useful load is defined as the weight of the pilot, co-pilot, passengers, baggage, usable fuel, and drainable oil. And our next term is payload. Now, what do you think that might be? Okay, let's think about payday, dollar signs, bada bing. Well, on the airplane, you got it. That's the load for which we can haul and get paid. That's payload, the weight of occupants, cargo, and baggage. And then the next couple of terms I want you to understand and study are three specific types of weights. We have the basic empty weight, the licensed empty weight, and the standard empty weight. Now, the basic empty weight is defined as the weight of the airplane and optional equipment. Unusable fuel and full operating fluids. The licensed empty weight is the basic empty weight without the engine oil. And the standard empty weight is the aircraft, the airframe, the engines, the operating equipment that is permanently installed, hydraulic fluid, unusable fuel, fuel engine oil, and fixed ballast. Now, when you go to make your calculations, you are going to use basic empty weight. And we're going to wonder, hmm, if I'm using basic empty weight, should I include the weight of unusable fuel? What do you think? Yes or no? If you answered no, you are correct. Why? Because look back at the definition of basic empty weight. The unusable fuel is dun, da, 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 included. You got it. Well, folks, those are the basic terms that are going to get us through the rest of weight and balance. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.